You know, it feels so good to once again be reviewing NXT. The last NXT review that I did on this channel, I want to say was about two or three weeks ago. And it's crazy because literally work has been kicking my ass as of late. Especially on Wednesdays for some reason. Hence why I wasn't able to do an NXT review these last two or three weeks. And I'm happy that I actually was able to come back home from work and actually watch NXT and able to do this review. Because NXT tonight, I felt like, was an enjoyable show. It was completely, you know, that you know that breath of fresh air that, that was needed. Because let's be real about it, you know, Raw this past Monday was, meh, it was terrible, it was a shit show. SmackDown Live, I did not even watch. Not because I didn't want to, because I'll even, I even said in my Raw review, I have been under the weather. Allergies have been kicking my ass. And it's good to know that I'm getting better now. I'm not fully 100%, if you will, but I'm getting better. So if I'm doing this throughout the review, I apologize in advance. I, uh, other than that, though, guys, I, again, I'm happy that I was able to watch NXT this week. Not, But more than anything, I am more excited for next week. Not for SmackDown Live, but for the simple fact that next week on the 29th of May... FIFA 18, the World Cup 2018 update will be available. So I will be streaming live on Twitch the World Cup, if you will. The game, that is. I'm not fucking streaming the actual World Cup. Holy shit, no. I'm just going to be streaming some World Cup gameplay with Peru because I'm Peruvian and also because, well, Peru's in the World Cup for the first time in 36 fucking years. Even without Paulo Guerrero, I will be streaming live, you know, the World Cup from the Peruvian perspective, if you will, throughout the entirety of the World Cup, just to get everyone ready for the World Cup and shit like that. If you want to follow me on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash heelsteven. So head over there, follow me there, and you'll see me stream, you know, FIFA 18 gameplay, especially come May 29th when the FIFA 18 you know, World Cup 2018 update is available. Free, that is, for those of you that have a PS4 and also Xbox One. NXT this week. Like I said, an amazing show. Enjoyable show, that is. An enjoyable fucking show. With a crazy ending, to say the least. But that's my honest opinion. Mother Flowers, I, as always, want to hear from you. That's right, you watching this video right now. I'm gonna, I want to know your thoughts. In the comment thread of this video, or let me know on fucking Twitter, at HeelSteven, where I tweet throughout all these shows, Raw and SmackDown Live, NXT, Impact Wrestling, and fun stuff like that. And not for nothing, too, but this show, at the same time, got me excited in some way, shape, or form uh, for TakeOver Chicago, too. Even though, for me, I'm, I'm gonna say this right now, I feel like TakeOver Chicago is that throwaway takeover. Yeah, granted, TakeOver Chicago 1 was a good show, all the fuck you want, but I feel like TakeOver Chicago's are like the throwaway takeovers. Because you're only going to have that one throwaway takeover. Let's be real about it. So the show kicked off with a tag team match between Heavy Machinery and TM61. Um, Heavy Machinery coming out of the ring. And who the fuck was sitting at ringside in the front row? Jonathan Coachman, the coach was sitting at ringside wearing a fucking NXT shirt as Heavy Machinery were coming up because they had to fucking point the camera at him for some fucking reason. They had to fucking point the camera to him and have him say, those are my guys. Those are my guys. Listen, it's good to know that there's an endorsement from the main roster for Heavy Machinery, all the fuck you want. But when it's Jonathan fucking Coachman, fuck. God damn it. Mother flower, really? Out of all the fucks you could have brought from the main roster to sit at NXT, you bring him? You bring fucking him? I'm just saying, like, you couldn't, you could not brought Corey Graves or fucking, I don't know, uh, fucking Byron Saxton or Tom Phillips. You could have bring me a fucking official. I don't fuck. You kind of get the gist. At the same time, though, I think it's cool that you see people from the main roster. Show up a full show up at full sale, you know, once in a while, sit at ringside, enjoy the show. 
I think that's great, you know, because you want them as well to be excited at what they're seeing from the future of the WWE. So I thought that was cool, but at the same time, it's like, why would we bring Thunder Coachman? Why, oh, why? Ugh, whatever. The match for what it was, I'm going to say this, it was I. right. I'm not going to go over deal. Like, oh, my God, it was amazing. Nothing like that, nah. Uh, the main thing they were selling here, the fact that TM61, a couple weeks ago, I think it was against the Street Profits. Yeah, it was Street Profits. Uh, they had to cheat to win. Um, the crowd was going crazy for, for uh, Heavy Machinery. It's a Ford! It's a Ford! It's a Ford! God, I thought that was funny as all shit a couple weeks ago. Um, people were chanting Tucky, because literally Tucker Knight was literally uh, getting a lot of offense against him and shit like that. And those of us was chanting, come on, Tucky, come on, Tucky. And everyone in the audience was chanting, Tucky, 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 Tucky. Um, all that, though, like I said, uh, all that led to Team 61 getting the win. Because Dozovich grabbed a towel from, from TM61 that was in the corner. And he was drying himself off and he threw it, you know, into the ring. The referee tried to get the towel and that called the double team by TM61, which caused... I want to say it was Shane Thorne who pinned Dozovich, had his foot on the ropes like he did, like they did against the Street Profits. So TM61, once again, cheat the win the same way. Lightning struck twice. And not for nothing, I feel like this team, as random as it is, because I feel like it was random when they turned heel. They needed it, you know? It makes them, you know, be used more than once on NXT. So why the fuck not at this point in the juncture? Um, so good for them. They got the win. Um, and let's see where they go. With let's see where they go. I'm looking forward to it. We get a little video package of Bianca Belair. And I think, again, you know, I like where they're going with this because they're showing who she is outside of the ESC character that she's in NXT. And I said it before and I'll say it again. I think someone like Bianca Belair is a star in the fucking making. She is. She has women's champion written all over her. Hands down, no doubt about it, Mother Flowers. And that being said, you know, I like where they're going with this because we're gonna get we're gonna get to we're gonna get to know her outside of the ring. At the same time, what's gonna do is gonna get you, the mother flower watching the show, to care about this character, care about the person the same way they did. I want to say last summer with Roderick Strong, you know, when he was feuding with Bobby Roode, let's get to know Roderick Strong, his story, where he's come from, what obstacles he had to go through, the fact that he's married, the fact that he has a child, the fact that, you know, he had tough beginnings and shit like that, you know, but we're going to find out more about Bianca Belair next week. And not for nothing, again, I think what they're doing with that is good. And you know what? Bianca Miller, and I said it before, and I'll say it again, she has superstar written all over her. She really, really does. Um, we get Kyrie Sane versus Lacey Evans. This was a rematch from their match a couple weeks ago that they actually recorded literally the day of TakeOver New Orleans. Um, this match was a little better, to say the least. Um, just crazy back and forth. And literally, it looked like Kyrie Sane was about to get the other win. And out of nowhere, Lacey Evans hits like this punch in the air as Kyrie Sane was, you know, in the air, if you will. She catches her with this crazy punch and literally knocks her out and then Lacey gets to one, two, three. Which, again, people reacted. Fucking Mauro Ronaldo sold this shit like a million bucks. Um, they were calling it the women's right, which, I, again, let it be. Let it fucking be, you know. At the same time, you know, someone like Lacey Evans getting one, two. She's another one. She's another one that I'll say... I'm not saying she's going to be world champion material, but I feel like someone like her down the road could be, again, just as long as it's the same way as Bianca Belair, one of those top women heels in that in that division at NXT. So why the hell not, you know? Why the fuck not? After this, we see outside the arena, Kathy Kelly catching up with Johnny Gargano and uh, Candice LeRae. Uh, Johnny's wearing a fucking neck brace, talking about how him and Candice, they thought about everything, what's going on. And as much as he will, as much as he will have to tell Kathy Kelly what's going on, he's going to tell everybody in the ring 
whether they don't want to hear it, it's what's best for them and shit. And literally, this has Daniel Bryan, you know, feel to it completely. It has that Daniel Bryan vibe, you know. This is arguably the top storyline in NXT right now, probably in WWE. If you want to count it outside of the NXT bubble, this is probably one of the top storylines right now. If not the top one, is probably in your top three. Hands fucking down. Hands fucking down. We get the handicap match, Lars Sullivan versus Ricochet and Velveteen Dream. I thought this match was a very, very fun match. It literally is one of those things where, again, you know, Ricochet and Velveteen Dream, they literally, and I mean this literally, got along for the majority of the match. It's one of those things where you think about, okay, you're seeming these two guys up. You expect Velveteen Dream to not tag in. Literally, just one of those angles where, okay, Ricochet getting the offense, he's getting his ass kicked, he wants to tag it, then fucking Lars Sullivan attacks him and wins. No, that even happened. They actually went in there, hit some double teams, got a reaction. It is one of those things where, you know, people were saying a long time ago, you know, what if Velveteen Dream and Aleister Black were to form that, you know, odd couple team, you know? And, you know, tear up the tag team division NXT. I say, why the hell not with Ricochet and Velveteen Dream? I get the feeling somewhere down the road with these two guys, you know what? If they're not competing for the NXT title, nor the, or the North American title for that matter, at a time where NXT, yeah, granted, the tag team division is sort of there. You know, you have um, War Raiders, Heavy Machinery, TM61. You have uh, the likes of fucking, I know I'm missing somebody, the Street Profits. Um, you can add another team then, an odd couple team. You know, again, also you have, you know, again, the Undisputed Era. You have uh, freaking Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch as well. But let's, at the same time, add another team to that mix. And it, it being, again, an odd couple team with Ricochet and Velveteen Dream. Why the fuck not? But again, they made you believe these two guys were fucking getting along. And at the end of it all, fucking Velveteen Dream. Literally catches Ricochet, hits him with like a fucking Death Valley drop. It does like a fucking call at the same time. And then he tells him, you don't belong here. You tried to screw me last time. Now it's my turn to screw you. But you don't fucking belong here and shit. And then Lars Sullivan literally pins Ricochet. But all this because, again, Velveteen Dream literally cost Ricochet or just screwed him over and shit. And nonetheless, you know, I look forward to seeing the match. Um, again... Because per the spoilers and shit like that, it was, it's out there. Right, Mother Flowers, it's fucking out there. But I look forward to seeing you know Ricochet versus a Velveteen Dream. They have match of the night right now over it at Chicago. But fuck, can't wait to see it. I know my voice sounds a little shitty right now because again, allergy season and shit. Just fucking bear with me. I right? I guarantee you by probably by the, by the time Friday kicks in for the podcast, I should be I. Right. I hope I am all right. We get a promo also early in the day as well with EC3 talking about how the last three matches he's been on a fucking tear. And now the fourth one will be the same thing. Just again hyping up how NXT will become NX3 and shit like that. We also get a backstage interview with Dakota Kai. Apparently Dakota Kai is going to get next week a championship match against Shayna Baszler for the women's title. And they're interviewing her, and they ask her, you know, how do you feel about it? But at the same time, just know who you're facing. And she goes on to say how she dreamt about this moment for a long time, even before she was even in NXT, how she wants this opportunity. And then Baylor comes in, and literally you see Kai just being all scared and timid and shit. And Baylor's telling, you know, it's funny how when I'm not here, you got all this shit to say, but when I show up, you just stay quiet. Say something, do something, right? And you see Dakota Kai just being all timid and shit, like literally bowling up a fist, and then she says, we'll see. Because again, Shayna Baszler's like, what makes you think you have a fucking chance? I want you to know you don't have a fucking chance. You know what I mean? But we'll see where this goes. Honestly, listen, I honestly thought they are going to save this shit for TakeOver Chicago, the way they were going with this shit. But at the same time, really, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm I'm okay with this. I really am okay with this. You know what I mean? But we'll see where this goes. I get the feeling that finally next week, 
we're gonna see. I'm not, I'm not saying we're gonna, I'm not saying we're gonna see a title change. Not hell no, mother flower. But we'll, but what we will see is Dakota Kai finally overcoming that fear of Shayna Baszler. But we'll see where that goes. We then get the final segment of the show. Oh, by the way, next week we're also going to get, um, from what it looks like, next week we're going to get uh, Roderick Strong versus Danny Burch. Because, again, there was also a video promo between both teams, Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan, about how last they had went over the Undisputed Era, and now they, they want a tag team title match. How also the Undisputed Era, they, they're claiming that all oh, that shit was a fluke. How they won't get it done next week or in Chicago that matter for takeover Chicago. So, so it looks like that match is official between Undisputed Eras, Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong versus Danny Burch and Oni Lorkin. So we'll see where that goes. But next week is Roderick Strong versus Oni versus um Danny Burch. Um we then get again Gargano and Kenneth Lorraine in the ring. Uh, Gargano said the last time that he was here over the anti championship match, the bell never rang and he left on a stretcher. How Gargano says when he sh- when he struggles to get up in the morning, his body reminds him of every bump, every bruise he has gotten. Gargano has been doing this his whole life. He literally has been doing this his whole life. He sat down with his wife and he realizes that it's time to start thinking about this, their future, right? Because again, they're married, right? So there's, again, his future and he's asking himself, was well, it all worth it? You know, everything that he's gone through and shit, right? And again, it just has that Daniel Bryan, you know, underdog story, that vibe. It has it, you know? And that's what makes it so interesting. Because again, Johnny Gargano essentially is the Daniel Bryan of NXT. He's the ultimate underdog. All the shit that he's gone through, and it gets taken away, taken away, taken away. And just when you think he's going to do it, it gets swept from under him and shit. So you want this guy to succeed. You want this guy to get his revenge. You know? And all this shit. And all this leads to him taking off his neck, but saying that, hell yeah, if Kamala Champa wants to go, I, he knows he's in the back. He's waiting for, he's waiting for fucking Champa. And it literally, what that reminded me of was 2002. And I don't know if you guys can remember this or not, but when Shawn Michaels um, was... I guess it was after SummerSlam all too when Triple H hit the sledgehammer on his back. And you see Michaels in New York at the world, right? The fucking, at their old store that they had in New York. And you see Michaels on a fucking wheelchair. He's trying to get up and shit and he struggles with it. And then he fucking just jumps up and acts like nothing happened. And he told Triple H that he was coming for him. And that's what that reminded me of where Gargano had this fucking neck brace on and he just ripped it off and shit. Calls out Ciampa. Ciampa comes out. And you see Ken is just begging Gargano not to do anything, right? And, and Ciampa's like, boy, if, boy, you better not be in the ring when I'm there or if now I'm going to finish off what I started a while back and shit. And you see Gargano just trying to chase down Gargano, Ciampa, right? The referee, the officials come in. They try to separate all this shit, Right? And you see Candace again pleading with Gargano to not get in the ring. It's not worth to think about it, right? All the shit they were talking about. And then Ciampa goes on to say, oh, he's, oh that Gargano needs to listen to his wife. In other words, he's literally saying that, hey, his wife has the balls in the family. His wife is essentially the man or the master, and Johnny's the bitch. And again, all that shit boiled up. And Gargano just didn't, he didn't give a shit. He got up on the apron. And fucking Ciampa pushes him off the apron. And Gargano falls. And he hits, unintentionally, he hits fucking Candice LeRae, his wife. And Candice falls. She lands like head first or something like that on the steel entrance ramp area and shit. And that, and again, listen, there were talks of having a moment where I guess Gar, or Ciampa you know, Paul drives Candice LeRae or something like that or gets his hand on Candice LeRae to make this shit personal. Well, we didn't get that, but this is as close as it'll get in WWE. This is as close as I know in, I know, I know in Impact Wrestling because I know it's going to get the comparison of how it happened at Redemption when fucking Eddie Edwards had Sammy Callahan tied up to the fucking ropes and shit and he was beating the fuck out of him with a kendo stick and then everyone tried to break it up until Alicia, uh, Alyssa Edwards got in, got in the ring, and Eddie by accident hit 
his wife with the stick as he was trying to turn around and shit. I know that comparison. I get that, if you will. But I feel like this had that more of a oh my god type of shit. You didn't, you didn't think it would happen. You, didn't, you see again, like you, you wanted to see it happen where it got personal and shit. But this is how far WWE will take it, and for that matter, I'll take it if you will. But nonetheless, I, I said it before and I'll say it again. Gargano and Champa right now is probably the best feud going on right now in WWE. And I know, again, it's NXT, but if you want to get off the NXT bubble here, this is probably one of the most exciting things happening right now. It really, really is. And I look forward to seeing the rematch at TakeOver Chicago because you know they're going to go that route, and you know it's going to main event. It is crazy they're going to go a year later back to the scene of the crime where it all started, and they're going to do it again. And I can't wait to see it. I cannot wait to see what the fuck goes down. But the Mother Flowers, again, NXT this week, was an enjoyable show. It really, really was. If you have not watched it, go out of your way to watch it whenever you get a fucking chance. All right? That's it for me, Mother Flowers. I know my voice right now sounds like shit. I get it. Hopefully by Friday, I sound a little better. But we'll see how that all this sounds. Guys, as always, thank you for watching this video. If you're new to the channel, hit that sub button down below. Give the video a big old thumbs up. By the way, again, once May 29 hits, I will be streaming live FIFA 18 on the PS4. The FIFA World Cup Russia 2018 update. I cannot wait to download the update. Play the World Cup, if you will, via Twitch. Twitch.tv slash HeelSteven. Follow me there. Also, that's where the Team Up podcast will go live every single week moving forward. So, mother flower, what the fuck are you waiting for? That's it for me, guys. Oh, as always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, mother flowers, follow me on Twitter at Steven. And it's wrestling and whatever. I'm out, y'all. Peace out, mother flowers. Oh, my goodness. My voice just indeed sounds like shit. But again, I cannot wait for May 29th. I cannot wait. Get well, Candace.